Now you can see that we got some really annoying lights going on here. We got our airbag light, seatbelt light, and right here is where it's really annoying, airbag light. And here it's really frustrating because you can clear it for a second, but then it just comes right back. We're gonna get this fixed. Welcome to my channel, Corey's Garage, where I try to make videos showing you that you can do pretty much anything with cars within reason and not be too afraid. Uh, if you enjoy this content, please give me a subscribe, hit the like button, if the thumbs up if you uh, enjoy the content and let's move on. So this is my cheap BMW. You may have saw my other videos. I picked this up for 2,200 bucks had a bad engine, replaced the engine. I got one with like almost the same exact mileage on it for I think it was 1300 bucks. So all in all, I've got less than four grand in this car Been driving it back and forth to work for the past three days, half hour drive each way, been going great. But there's a couple things I still need to straighten out before I try to sell it, if I sell it. Um, so the airbag light is on and I was able to pull up on my uh, Bluetooth code reader that the headrest, active headrest actually had tripped. So at some point this car has been tapped in the rear and there's a little bit of a paint scuff on the passenger side rear bumper. Maybe I'll show you that in a minute. But I, I, that's all I could find. I can't find anything that was like repaired on the car. But anyways, these headrests, they, they push forward if there's any sort of impact to prevent whiplash. And so your head can't really snap back because the, the headrest just pushes forward so your head can't make that movement. So in my case, the code showed me that the driver's side was uh, pushed forward. So I looked at it, did a bunch of research online and, and saw sure enough, it was active, it's pushed forward. I got lucky, there must not have been anybody in the passenger seat or there was some other malfunction because the passenger one did not activate. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna replace that headrest with a new one and then see what do we need to do to clear the code. Um, it's possible that I have other things wrong, but these were, this was the most obvious, clear one to fix. I know for sure that I could fix it. So I ordered a new one off eBay or a used one that wasn't active. I haven't opened the box yet, so let's hope it really isn't active. And we're going to replace that. After that, I'll see if I can clear the code. I'm going to disconnect the battery before I uh, pull this one out completely and see if the code comes back. If not, we're going to download some BMW specific software and we'll clear the code ourselves. First, we're going to see if we even need to do that. One thing to know about BMW, and I didn't know this until I read it on some forums, is that if any part of the uh, airbag system faults or is active or fails, whatever, none of it will work. So the seatbelt latches won't, uh, won't like lock and latch you when your seatbelt, the upper belt, the airbags will not work. Um, pretty serious really to me. I mean, normally I, I've had vehicles with an airbag light on and they've been in accidents and the airbag still works. Supposedly with the BMW, it won't. And honestly, I'm not like the most safety worried person, but to know the seatbelt won't even lock and the airbags won't work, I don't even really feel that comfortable, you know, pushing this car too hard or who knows, you know, somebody else could uh, cause the accident. So I, I kind of do like my safety a little bit more than I thought after I found out that the safety stuff won't work. Uh, I won't sell this car with that stuff not working. To me, it's important that when I sell a car, it's pretty much fully sorted out. I don't want to sell somebody something that has an issue. And if I did, I would make it really clear to them that, you know, this has to be fixed. But we're going to fix it. All right, so here I am in the back of the car. I'm going to show you how you can tell if you're active headrest has been activated or not. So the passenger side, you can see, see this gap? You can stick your finger right in it. That means that this air, this active headrest has not moved forward. If it moved forward, there wouldn't be a gap here. So this one's still good. And 
when I read the codes, it also showed that this was didn't have a problem. It didn't come up. This one, on the other hand, you can see there's no room here and there's a room up front. So this one's been activated. It's pushed forward. Uh, as far as I know, you cannot reset these. And so I ordered a new one on eBay. It was like 90 bucks or it's a new used one. And uh, we're going to try to swap it out ourselves and see what happens. Here's my, uh, my new box of Fiji water, otherwise also known as a active headrest. Just going to cut this open. Like I said, I haven't even looked at it. Hope it's good. All right, excellent. The color is right, it's perfect, and it's not activated. If it was, this gap wouldn't be here. So we are gonna pull out the other one and see what we have. I think it's gonna be pretty easy. I already have watched how other people did it on YouTube. This is not the only video showing how to do this, but I didn't think it'd hurt to show you guys the progression of this car, and maybe you haven't seen those other videos. So let's give it a whirl. Also, because this headrest has not been activated and the seller was telling the truth, pictures were honest, I will put a link to the seller's eBay store in the description. So, you know, got to give props to them. They gave me a good part. It was like 90 bucks. Can't really beat that. I've got the seat tipped all the way forward. Um, I'm going to get these two. There's two bottom. I think they're just push clips at the bottom of this. And I've got this little tool here I'm going to try to use. I should be able to get under them and pop them out, but we'll see. One other quick thing I wanted to mention, though, before we go further, is that after I drove the car for a little while, it started complaining that I needed to buckle up the passenger, even when there wasn't a passenger. I don't know if that's related to the headrest or if that cushion is bad and it thinks there's always somebody sitting in it. I don't know for sure if I'm going to fix it, depending on what the symptoms are. So if it thinks there's always somebody sitting there and the fix is to buckle it when there isn't anybody there, but the airbag's still going to work, I probably won't fix it. And I'll just tell the next owners that. But if it becomes a bigger problem, I'll buy a new seat cushion. Uh, you can buy a whole new bottom half of the seat on eBay for like, 120 bucks shipped so i still might fix it myself i don't know we'll see but i just want to point out that we may not get rid of the airbag light just by replacing this this headrest it may be more than that but i know for sure this is bad so let's start there let's see if i can get this clip out might be a little bit awkward all right those clips did not want to release believe it or not this was a tool for the job for me. I got one out, really didn't want to come out, you can see. And the other one, I just broke the head off. Um, I have more push clips like this, so I'll put new ones in, not a big deal. And it'll be a lot easier to pull the one that, that the head broke off, just pull it through the other direction once I get the back off. So you can see it's, it's loose here. I'm not sure if it just drops down. There we go. All right. We got some pretty cool stuff back here. So what we're really after though is this. So this wire here needs to be disconnected and then come up with the, the headrest. I think it's literally a matter of just pushing this button and yanking the headrest out. But so far I have not disconnected the battery. And the reason I haven't done that yet is because I'm going to tip the seat all the way back now to give me room, headroom, to be able to get that headrest out. So once I tip the seat all the way back, I'll disconnect the cable, which I think you could probably do with the power on. It's probably safe, but I'm going to disconnect the battery. It's going to help reset the system possibly anyways, and uh, then we'll take it out. So let's get that seat back. It's not all the way back, but I believe that's plenty of clearance. It's pretty easy. Just pull this panel out. We're going for the negative terminal here. Just 
10 millimeter. All right. So I'm just trying to get this wire around like that. It was on that clip here. Now, figure out how it comes off. So I separated it from its clip. So it's this piece here. Just to push that tab, pull. Disconnected. Now we're gonna go ahead and push this in and see if we can pull it all the way out. I did see there was a guy, he was struggling with this side, like there was some sort of clip here, but I don't know what that would be. Then right here, if you remember, it went, the wire went over this clip. Boom, factory. All right. Let's connect the battery back up and we'll put the seat forward and we'll see what happens. Battery connector going back on. Little sparks are normal. It's all the electronics in the car just kind of getting powered up. Capacitors are filling, things like that. Nothing to be scared of. Beautiful. We're done in the trunk. Will the computer reset itself? Or do I have to actually do it myself? So let's find out. I can tell you already, it's really nice not having this uh, headrest hit me right in the back of the head. When I first drove it before I knew that was what was wrong, I was my wife was with me and I was telling her, like, this feels like the headrest is way too far forward. Looks like the code's still there. So the uh, traction control and brake light is normal. That will show up after you've disconnected the battery until you move the car a bit. All right, I took it for a really quick ride just to get rid of the uh, like the chassis errors. That stuff goes away. The traction control and stability and all that stuff. So my lights are still on. It's still complaining about service. What's really weird is it keeps complaining about a door open and there's no doors open and it was complaining about a light failure. So system, re the restraint system malfunction and light in system stop vehicle. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with that. I haven't driven it at night and it's getting a little bit dim, but not the lights aren't even on. Actually, they're not working at all and they used to work so what we're going to do is i'm going to shut the vehicle off we're going to leave the um we're going to leave the key in the on position and i'm going to go ahead now and i'm going to rescan it i'll record uh what that looks like i've got a, a bluetooth scanner i bought from uh, autozone like last year when i was working on that sob and we'll see what happens so let's see what kind of codes we get and if i clear them with that scanner will it actually get rid of the light i don't think so but we have other plans so here we are just going to pair up our bluetooth scanner so take a couple minutes pair it up success now we're going to scan the entire network to see all the computers in the system this part's going to take a long time, so I'm just going to skip ahead from here. The scan is done, and we're going to make a report. This part, again, it takes a while, so we're going to skip ahead, and we'll see what the report shows. We are done, and we have all kinds of codes showing up. We have, I think it was nine of them. And we're going to look at what those are. We have all kinds of different codes. I'm not going to erase each individual code at this point. I want to see what they all are. You can see here I'm going to look like I'm going to erase the codes and then decide not to. 
and go back and just look at what the different codes are. So we didn't get a code for the air, for the uh, active headrest, which I thought was pretty interesting. And I thought that might still show up. But we have all kinds of codes just from resetting the battery. It's not real. They'll go away. After I reset them, they won't come back. And so we're going to reset all the codes in a minute here. And then I will start the vehicle and see what happens. So I cleared all the codes and to my surprise, the airbag light went away. And that wasn't one of the codes that showed up. Um, I think it's gonna come right back. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and put my seatbelt on, start the car again. Seat bag light went away. All right, seat. The seat belt light went away. Let's start it and see what happens. Wow. Okay. It looks like we fixed it. Still have the light system error. Which is really interesting because that, that's not a code that even showed up. So let's go and look. Uh, to the main menu. Let's go to vehicle info. Vehicle status. Still trying to measure the oil. Check vehicle brake fluid. You know what? That brake fluid has shown up before whenever I've reset the computer, but it goes away. So much so sure yeah that's just BMW wants you to bring it in yeah this is really weird I walked around the car I didn't see anything wrong with the lights it's just really bizarre to me that that would show up after fixing the active headrest so that's odd. Guess I can possibly look at the manual or the details. I don't know. It doesn't work. And I know it's a tire malfunction. So, anyways, we have a new error about the lighting system, but our airbag's fixed. This tells me that the uh, passenger airbag is detecting whether or not somebody's sitting in the seat. So let's just see if it complains. It's not complaining. Let's go to move a little bit. The service required light is just because of the, the light in malfunction, whatever that means. Probably not gonna get going fast enough to trigger the passenger airbag, but that seems fixed. It's also not complaining about a door being open anymore. Um, I don't know, but we fixed the uh, airbag light, which is huge. Really excited about that. One step closer. Uh, maybe the lighting system is a bulb out and I haven't noticed it yet, but yeah, I'm super excited. I did not think I was gonna be able to uh, get that light to go out with the uh, the Bluetooth scanner that I have, but it worked. So that's pretty exciting. So once again, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. I thought that this was pretty cool. You know, with a, a scanner, I paid maybe a hundred bucks for that. I uh, was able to reset the airbag light after changing the active headrest, which was extremely easy. The only part that was difficult was getting those clips out, but knowing that they're just, you know, those Christmas tree clips, you could just cut them and then yank them out with pliers if you want to. It's not a big deal. Uh, put new ones in. I still have to put new ones in mine. I will do that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Now the, the seat belts should work correctly airbag should all work headrest should work i just got to figure out why all of a sudden the lighting system has a problem but 
Like I said, it's getting a little bit dark, but they, they used to work on uh, when I would switch them to manual or whatever, and right now the, the lighting system isn't working at all. Really interesting. If you're a BMW buff and you might know what's going on there, please let me know. Uh, maybe you will comment before I figure it out, but I'm pretty sure I'll figure it out. We're getting really close with this car, really close to being able to sell it. It's going to take a few more weeks for the title to show up anyway, so it's not a big deal. And I don't mind driving it and enjoying it until that day comes. Thanks for watching. Bye.